Today we embark on our very first space expedition, and our newly constructed Tier 1 rocket is going to send us right out into space. Hello everyone and welcome back to New Horizons. That's right, so our mission today is to reach the moon, and the moon is going to unlock some very crucial materials for us, the main thing being titanium, but there's some other nice things we can gather when we're there. So most of the preparation is already completed actually, we automated ITNT for the construction of the rocket. We invested in oxygen equipment for ourselves to stay alive on the moon. However, the one thing we didn't talk about last episode was fuel for the rocket. The Tier 1 rocket is powered by Cetane boosted diesel. Cetane is an alternative HV power source. Instead though, we rely on benzene, so it's not something that we have lying around. We did manage to get some from Quest Rewards, but I did want to make sure we could get a bit more for the first few expeditions. So using some of the chemicals we had around, I made something called Ethanone. And ethanone we can combine with nitric acid, which we made as part of TNT. That will give us tetranitromethane. And that we can combine with regular diesel to give us cetane boosted diesel. So 38 cells should be enough for a couple of round trips to the moon. However, we still do want to make sure we are over prepared for this. So the one thing we should have done quite a while ago actually is upgrade our backpack. And just to be safe, I do want to take everything out of here. I think it voids it if you if you upgrade with things in there. So this upgrades from 36 slots into 63 slots. And actually the one after this is titanium, which we should be able to get after we visit the moon. And just since we have the materials, I'm going to craft actually four more of these things. Oh yeah, that's right. You can only have four in your inventory at once. Yeah, it actually throws it. That's funny. <laughs> and we might as well upgrade them all to the second tier. One of the other things we want to gather from the moon is salt water. And that is going to be important for titanium production. And to gather that, we can use one of our fluid drilling rigs, actually our only fluid drilling rig. We have way too much raw oil right now, so I think we can repurpose this for the moon. Yeah, this is going to be a quite a lengthy first expedition. I anticipate spending about three or four hours on the moon. It's not something I want to rush. I want to make sure we get everything from there. So we've got the miner, we've got fuel, we have a full tank of benzene. This will allow us to charge the batteries when we're there. Oh, that's right. I almost forgot we should collect the second miner which is currently in the overworld here, I think on a magnetite vein not far from our base. It's not just the bauxite that we want to find there, we can also get bastnasite and monazite, and then also an ilmenite vein, along with some of the more common overworld veins, which we might want to collect when we're there if we have a spare miner. Is it here? Tiny little hole in the ground? Perfect. Let's take this with us. So I also want to craft us another prospector scanner. This takes the durability from 8400 to 59000, this is a shadow metal version, and it's also HV up from MV. Yeah, this should help us locate the ore veins and the fluid veins. And the other thing is lighting actually, because regular torches on the moon don't work without oxygen. A good option is to use these inverted white lamps, yeah and we can even cut them down, I think they cut four at a time, so you can get quite a lot of lighting out of these things. I'm just charging up the equipment, I think now we're ready for the first expedition. Alright everyone, well, here goes nothing. Our very first space expedition. Here we go. Alright, we are halfway there. Still the landing to go, so we want to select the moon. Let's hope it's daytime on the moon. Okay, it looks like a safe enough spot to land and it looks like it is daytime, perfect. And inside the lander should be our rocket, yes. Okay, so the plan of action immediately is to set up oxygen. As you can see in the top left, we are depleting our supplies. So I set up the oxygen collector here along with a bunch of leaves around it. The more leaves we have, the more oxygen it will generate. Okay, so a decent amount of leaves placed, it looks like we're generating 132 per second. And the oxygen we want to send into both the oxygen compressor and the oxygen bubble distributor. Yeah, so the bubble distributor, which we also have to power with a battery. And this is going to slowly make us a sphere of breathable space. I don't know how it contains the oxygen, it just does. <laughs> so yeah, whenever we stand in here, we shouldn't deplete any oxygen that we're storing on ourselves in the oxygen tanks. And we can effectively stay here as long as we have power in these batteries. It really doesn't drain too much though, so... I mean, yeah, it's effectively infinite. And considering the fact that we have our gas turbine and battery buffer, 
which we can actually use to charge the batteries. We can basically relax now. We can stay here as long as we need to. And we can also plug in the compressor. Other way. We can give this a battery, and this allows us to refill the oxygen tanks that we have on us. Okay, so now the plan of action is to start to excavate this place. I've set up some waypoints here so we can return. Let's see, the first four ore veins is ilmenite, copper, quartz, and quartz. Since we have two miners, ideally we want to place it on two separate bauxite veins to begin with. And then after that we can gather whatever else we need. There's the first bauxite, awesome. Aha, and even Thumbcraft Aura Nodes here, I forgot about these. Oh nice, and the second bauxite vein. Hello zombie. Ow. The mobs here look very smart with their oxygen gear on. Look at this guy. <laughs> Alright, so I've been digging around here for over an hour trying to find salt water. We just can't seem to find any salt water. I mean, we found a tiny little bit over here. Ideally, we want to find one of the bigger veins. And in fact, it does indicate there's one nearby. It doesn't tell us exactly what we found though. Oh, it does. It looks like we found helium-3, which is the other fluid we can get on the moon. I really just want this salt water vein. And look at this. We're actually not alone out, out here. There appears to be... Hello, guys. <laughs> Look at these guys. I don't think they offer us any trades, do they? No. I have to say though, traversing this place is so fun with the zero gravity. I had the nano bits of the traveler on, but those were actually too fast. Oh, we found it! Fine. Look at this. This is so much. This is more salt water than we know what to do with. Oh, it's been so much digging to try and find this, but we have a long ways to go yet on the moon. So there is a second reason we came to the moon, and that is to find the next tier of rocket schematic. And those are only found inside moon dungeons, which I... Yeah, this is definitely a moon dungeon right here. Here goes nothing, I guess. Oh yeah, and for the quest we have to grab some of this dungeon brick. Okay, there's a bunch of spawners in here. I really don't anticipate this giving us much trouble, especially with how geared we are with the crossbow. But there is a boss at the end of this dungeon. Oh, that was a fast zombie. Okay, just run through. <laughs> we should make it through here, no problem. Our oxygen supply is the main thing we have to keep an eye on. More skeletons, more spiders. As for the loot for this place, I don't think there is much other than the schematic, the necessary request item. Boss room ahead, let's see how we do here. Are we gonna two-shot this guy? We actually two-shot the boss. <laughs> oh yeah. This guy should drop the key. There it is. And at the end of the dungeon should be a chest. Okay, we did get Askematic, just not the right one, although I think there's a shapeless craft for it. Yeah, this is the one for the moon rover. I think we can shapeless craft it into the tier two rocket though. And that should be the quest. There we go. Anything else of value here? A music disc, I'm definitely gonna take that actually. Okay, now just to find the way out of here. And I think we're actually done- no, actually we're not done on the moon. There's one very vital- Was that a Thumbcraft spider? That was pretty close, I'm not- I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> okay, we're gonna dig our way out of here. Yeah, so there's one more material we have to gather here from the moon. Meteoric iron, which we can find here in fallen meteors. They fall randomly around the player. So now rewind into just after I placed the fluid rig, we had both of the miners set down on bauxite veins. And I went out and spent a good two hours mining the moon. First of all, collecting an ilmenite and chromite vein. And while doing all of this manual mining, we did accumulate a good amount of moon rock, which we can process into various different materials. 
After the Ilmenite, I also went to gather Monazite and Neodymium. Neodymium is something that we need for the EV tier of components after the HV tier. And by that point it seemed the two miners were also finished, so we moved them onto bauxite veins number 3 and 4. And throughout the mining session I tried to keep those going as much as I could. But yeah, after getting a good amount of the monazite vein cleared, I then started the search for meteoric iron. And this thing only spawns in the meteors or in small ores. And we do actually benefit from the fortune bonus on our pickaxe and also on the miners. But still, this took even longer than searching for salt water. I was hunting the moon surface for hours. Like, really, this takes forever to find. And we have to make sure we get enough here because this is needed for the tier 2 rocket. However, just a moment ago we were able to get the quest. I'm going to trust that that is enough. I just collected miner number 1. And that also happened to have some meteoric iron in it. I suspect this one will have as well. Oh wow, that is so many ores. But yeah, we'll grab both the miners. And the last thing is the fluid rig. Which I'm hoping is also finished. We don't have anywhere to place all this stuff. Yeah, look at, <laughs> look at all this moon rock I've mined. Okay, this should be the position of the fluid rig. Let's see how it's doing. Ignore this door, by the way. Oh, it's actually almost filled the full super tank. Wow. I think we will actually just disable this right now and take it with us. However, it's time for us now to head back to... I really hope we've got everything from the moon here. I did double check. I'm pretty sure I've packed everything. Oh, and what are the chances we land in a rocket silo? It looks like we're slightly off. Yeah, I don't think we took off from the exact same location. Oh, we have maintenance issues. You hear that? <laughs> okay, we'll wait for the rocket to come back. And there's guardians here to greet us. Great. Okay, what is it this time? Pipe is loose? <laughs> I'm glad we have nothing crafted. That should, that should turn it off, right? Yeah. Alright, awesome. I did manage to condense everything we got from the moon. This is all of the ores we managed to pick up. Actually, not as many as I would have liked to get. It looked like a little more when we were there, to be honest. Maybe it's just the compressed chest making it look like less than it actually is. And this one is full of all the moon rock and the moon dirt, all of which we can pulverize into dust and then centrifuge into primarily tungstate. And you know what? We have a bit of a processing problem right now. I mean, just look at all the stuff we have to process still. <laughs> Like, we, I've just been throwing down the miners, like, permanently, and only selectively processing the things we need. Which I think is the best way to go about things right now. But it doesn't help our storage situation. And it's also not very good for organization either. But you know what? We're going to put off that problem even further. And instead, we're going to prioritize the automation of titanium. Not quite as simple as just throwing it through the blast furnace, though. There is a couple of extra steps we need to make this happen. Oh yeah, and the other thing is, we are completely out actually we have one hv circuit left lots of lv but uh yeah to process titanium we need at least hv machinery and an hv blast furnace so with no time to lose let's start crafting so for titanium production the main thing we need is another blast furnace and i want to make sure it's separate from the rest and also go for the highest tier of coils available right now which for us is nichrome and that dust also has to go through the blast furnace even with the nitrogen catalyst, it still takes 60 seconds per ingot, and we need two stacks for a set of coils. So that was going to take a while, but a blast furnace is not just the coils. We come alive in the night time, something about how we dance in the moonlight. That look in your eyes, it tells me that you want me and all my loving. We come alive in the night time, you and I, we come alive. Hey everyone, 3 from the future here. So I did try to set up titanium on camera here, but it didn't turn out very well. So you know what, instead I'll just give you the short version and we'll go over things after it's set up. Oh my goodness, this was a lot of crafting. We were quite a few materials short for all this stuff, but we managed to get there in the end. Yeah, let's go back to where we just left off.
I think we might just have fully automatic titanium production. Well, not fully automatic. Let me, uh, <laughs> let me temper your expectations right here. Yeah, look at this. We got the first four hot titanium ingots here, which of course have to be cooled down in a vacuum freezer. And you might be thinking, wait a minute, we already have a vacuum freezer, right? Yes, we do. And it's on the other side of the base here. And we're kind of running out of space over here. So I thought, you know what? Eventually, we're going to have to have two vacuum freezers. So why not craft the other one right now? Wait a minute, three, didn't you just talk about setting up permanent infrastructure last episode in the valley? That's right, dear viewer, you would be correct. <laughs> but that's exactly re the reason we're not setting it up down there, because we don't have any of the rooms designed, which by the way is something that's going to happen pretty soon. I want to really deep dive into the concept design. It's something that we have to fully flesh out in this style. But yeah, the reality of GTNH is that we, we do have to do it like this. However, you will be pleased to hear that titanium is one of the main materials we need to unlock applied energistics, among some other pretty significant things here though. For example, the energy acceptor is titanium. I think the ME controller also takes titanium plates, yeah. So yeah, we will need a steady supply of titanium, not to mention it's used for all of the EV machinery. So the final thing to do here, actually we want to flip that the right way. All we have to do here is send this into the input bus of the vacuum freezer. And this also gives us two outputs, which has been extracted on purple. So I think we'll need a item filter for this. So we want to insert purple, but filtered for only hot titanium. And we could have used the Greg Tech filler for this, but we're already on a conduit line. So it's just as easy to use these basic item fillers and flip this the right way. Hit it with the soft mallet. I've already done the maintenance. Uh oh, <laughs> of course, we voided the first one. I didn't give this thing power, did I? Okay, now when we start with a vacuum freezer, it shouldn't void anything. Seven seconds to cool the ingot. That should appear up here, and then I've got a drawer here to buffer the titanium. There it is, the first titanium ingot. I think the quest asks for 16. All right, so as for the other machines behind us, do you remember the salt water which we got from the moon? Before I started crafting, I did start to electrolyze it all. And for now, like everything around the base, we are manually transporting the chlorine. Oh wow, that is a lot of chlorine here. But yeah, the chlorine goes over in this super tank up here. And that gets automatically inserted into this chemical reactor. It gets mixed with carbon cells and rutile dust. So rutile dust is also something we went to the moon for. And we get it via bauxite dust or ilmenite dust. And it also exists in the chance outputs from bauxite. So I think the best way we want to process this is... Oh, there's two different options here. We could macerate thermally centrifuge and then macerate again for one chance at Rutile, then one chance at Gallium. But actually our Gallium supplies aren't looking too bad right now. So I think what we do instead is ore wash, macerate, centrifuge for the double chance at Rutile. And I did start to process a tiny bit earlier, but again, we have a processing problem. Okay, there's six right here. So whenever we chemically react this with chlorine, it turns into carbon monoxide. The carbon monoxide goes to an electrolyzer and electrolyzing carbon monoxide gives us the carbon and some oxygen. And the carbon goes into a cannon machine over here where it fills the cell, and that gets passed back to the chemical reactor for carbon cells, and that fully recycles the carbon cells. The oxygen is passed into the super tank, just as a buffer, this is basically profit. And then the other thing we get out of this, the main thing, titanium tetrachloride, that goes into the blast furnace. So HV blast furnace minimum, canthal coils, magnesium dust, which is something we actually have to get some more of. Circuit 12 titanium tetrachloride gives us one hot titanium ingot, which is going to the vacuum freezer for titanium. And it also gives us a way to recycle a partial amount of the chlorine back. So we get magnesium chloride dust. And this thing we can chemically react with sodium dust. And we get all of the magnesium back. And all of the magnesium just goes back into the input hatch or input bus. So that chemical reactor is down here for sodium. And then we also get four salt dust. And the four salt dust goes from the chemical reactor into an electrolyzer. And electrolyzing the salt gives us all of the sodium back, but only half of the chlorine back. I think it's actually less than half. Right, it's two salt to one chlorine, but it costs us four buckets of chlorine to make titanium te tetrachloride. Oh wait, hold on a second. That's not how you spell recycle. You can, rec <laughs> you can recycle this as well to get magnesium and chlorine back. It does say all the magnesium, but it doesn't say all the chlorine. I'll have to, wait, let me double check those numbers actually. I was under the impression we would have to input more chlorine into the system. Well, color me surprised. I, I am very pleasantly surprised at that actually. I just double checked. It turns out we do get all of the chlorine back. 
Aha, uh -huh. so we can actually swap out the super tank with a regular tank. We don't need to buffer this much over here. So yeah, I guess if we prime it with a little bit, we get all of it back so long as we have the full processing line in here like we do. And I think I'm also missing, yeah, I'm missing muffler upgrades for this. Yeah, I don't think this was the case in Season 1, actually. I think we lost some of the chlorine in the production of titanium. The only inputs for this is benzene and rutile. And speaking of which, actually we can set up a little drawer here for inputs. Drawer design is something we might also want to take a look at for the valley. Do we want to keep it the same as what we have? I really like this design, actually. I've been doing blue for input items and orange for outputs. Sort of like the way that Greg Tech does the hatches. That honestly was a really great genius suggestion by a few of you guys in the comment section. So yeah, I guess we make this drawer input for rutile. Extract on red. All we need now is to watch for maintenance. Add some conduit facades. And we can start, well, so long as we process all the bauxite, <laughs> we should have a steady supply of titanium coming in here. So sometime during the previous episode, we also hit 40k subscribers on the channel here, which to me is just mind blown. I never ever thought I would make it this far. Yeah, I really have to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you guys for being a part of this journey. <laughs> and we still have a long ways to go here. I need you guys with me to uh, finish this thing. Otherwise, I'm going to go insane. But yeah, as a thank you for 40k and for everything, I wanted to include something extra special this episode. I hope you guys enjoy this. I'm currently in the middle of setting up titanium. And it's not edited yet, but I wanted to show you guys what goes into these time lapses. Just briefly, I'm, I'm no editing wizard or anything, and I have no idea if this is actually the correct way to do things. <laughs> it's just the way that I've developed after uh, so many hundreds of videos. So yeah, this is like the, uh, well, I'll show you like the raw footage, right? Like just this, it's just me placing blocks. So like you can see here where the kick drum is and where the snare drum is. And you basically just line up the block placement. So like here, we're on the next one here. So we just put in a cut. This one, this should be locked. Cut here, and then keep scrolling it along until you line up this, which is the block placement, with the kick drum, and then eventually, this is this is soloed. Eventually, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's almost there. I've been talking a lot though, so uh, normally it's a bit faster than this, but basically there's no easy way to do this. <laughs> you just have to like, try to line them up as best you can and then you manually go... I think I missed a beat here. Yeah, there's supposed to be one right here. Right? Oh, that was a skip. Sometimes I, I have flukes like that and I just keep them in. It's kind of off beat, but it might work. Hold on. Yeah, see, that kind of works. That's... Yeah, we're we're going to keep that. It's just a little... It's a happy little accident, as Bob Ross would say. Anyways, yeah, that's basically... Uh, I just wanted to show you guys what goes into the editing process. I do spend a long, long time editing here. Almost more than I'd play the game, but, you know. <laughs> it's a lot of fun, actually, when she, once you get into things. Once you have an idea in your head. And then, as I'm sure you guys have probably seen in the video... The final result after some tweaking. There was one part there that sounded like a frame off. I think it's this. Yeah, right there. I want it to be on you and I. Hear that? This one here is slightly off. It's going to be like two frames, maybe. One more. Yeah, right there. And just to make it a bit easier to watch, I'm going to increase this. So now it should be on you and I. Perfect. Although this... I'm going to increase this frame as well. Yeah, so there's a bit of an extra gap here. It's not so jarring. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, ho I hope you enjoyed that little uh, behind the scenes right there. 
A processing speed of 400%, 75% EU cost. Yes, please. That sounds juicy. So we are going to pick up the GT++ large sifting machine. And hello, creeper. This guy's been chilling out here for the past 30 minutes or so, ever since I, I started crafting this machine. So this thing is going to replace this single block LV sifter, which I still use very frequently, actually. And at least partially, it's going to help us to alleviate some of this backlog. Although, honestly, I don't think we want to get into the recipe together. I'm just going to craft this. <laughs> like, the recipe for this thing is just such a nightmare. This is GT++ at its best. I do know we need a HV sifting machine, which I think is a quest. And of course, this is also a multi-block, so we need all the usual stuff. Input bus, output bus, energy hatch, which I made five more of when I was crafting the EBF. Yeah, we are going to run this thing at HV, and we'll also need a gas turbine, as always. At some point, I don't want to say soon, but at some point we are going to centralise power, and we're going to be transporting power around, rather than transporting fuel. But that is sometime in the future. And according to the tooltip here, this thing is 5x3x5, five by by five, so we should have enough space to fit it in back here. In fact, I did plan ahead when I originally built this room. Okay, this is the moment of truth. Did I craft this correctly? This should form the, mo the last five casing. Hopefully. Complete structure. Incomplete structure, why? <laughs> You guys know that I'm the genius of building multi blocks, all the way back to Divine Journey 2. <laughs> if you guys have been around that long. Uh, oh, you know what we're missing? The muffler hatch, which I'm really hoping we can put here just for symmetry reasons. Okay, now it just has problems. We have to take care of that via maintenance. It's the circuitry again, the soldering. Where's the soldering iron? Soldering iron. I, I was charging it somewhere, but I don't remember where. All right, we are in business. So there's this benzene line here, which powers the rest of these machines. We're sending that to a gas turbine. That's going to point down into the energy hatch at HV. Then we have input on the left, and this thing has to have four output buses. For some reason, it's just a requirement of the machine. So these four, these four blocks here are output buses. It's all sent on conduit, and that's going to go into another chest. This will probably need an upgrade, though. Ah, we'll put it on the floor. We'll put it like this. Insert on blue. You know what? This actually fits perfectly here. This is awesome. And the quest for this actually gives us a choice reward here. What do we want to take? I'm leaning towards the diamond ore. Either diamond or emerald. I think we're going to go... Uh, yeah, we're going to take this diamond though. Which, of course, we have to pulverize. Then we have to wash at 25 seconds per crushed ore. This is another huge bottleneck we have to address. Do you work? Yes, you do. Two seconds to sift that thing. <laughs> that is crazy. That is crazy fast. Oh, I didn't enable output from this one. Oh yeah, it's the simple things. It's the <laughs> it's the simple things in this pack. We have to take the achievements as they come. Yep, thank you, Thumbcraft. You feel exhausted? I <laughs> just about do after crafting that thing. However, I've been processing a bit more rutile. Yeah, I've been making up some more rutile. I'm going to keep this going between episodes. We're currently at 12 titanium. Oh no, we skipped a step. We first have to hold 16 hot titanium and also 96 magnesium chloride. I was only paying attention to this final quest, which is for 16 titanium. I Well, I guess we're not getting that quest today. It's not like I claim the quest rewards anyway, right? Although that being said, we should claim the one for the rocket. The HV bags we're going to hold on to because we want to enchant those. But there's a space invaders moon bag here though. And it gives an oxygen tank. That's not bad. Anyways, this is also a good wrapping up point for this episode. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode of New Horizons.